Hello, Patrick. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Good. How's your break? Good. I went to Italy. Oh, wow. Fun. Yeah. We're in Italy. We're in Italy to go. I went to Sicily for a bit for a couple of weeks, and then I uh, last couple of days I was spent in Florence and Rome. So. Oh, wow. That's great. Just with, uh, with your family? Uh, my girlfriend's family. Her dad's station out there. Oh, she nice. Went, she wanted to go see them. She's like, I'm going to Italy. You want to come along? I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, a few of my friends are going to Italy later this year, too. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. it's beautiful there. It's very nice. Good food, well, too. Yeah, lots of good food, uh, lots of history because it's built a lot longer than the U.S. Yes, <laughs> uh, towns are very small on roads wise. They kind of drive kind of crazy over there. They, they'll tell you the whole time if you're slow. Oh, cool. <laughs> interesting. Did you rent a car or did you take the train? Uh, we had a car in Sicily and then we took the train and uh, the main island. Uh, Okay. This is the only thing you have. Oh, okay. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. How's your break? It was good. Yeah. Got married early December. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah. And then just holidays, family stuff after that, just mostly just taking it easy. So, yes.
Hey guys. All right, it's a uh, four o'clock. Let's go and get started. All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you all. I'll admit, I didn't expect to see you all today, but uh, but here we are. Um, all right, so my name is uh, Professor Justin Tran. I think I think I know quite a few of you already, so it's good to see you guys again. Uh, but for those of you first time, uh, it's nice to meet you. Okay, um, so today's lecture, um, the plan for today is just to kind of introduce just what this class is all about. Uh, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions about what this class is, so it's, it's, it's a little bit unique uh, compared to a lot of the other electives that you may have chosen. Um, but so I wanted to talk today about kind of what you can expect from the course, uh, what are, you know, what are the things you're going to be doing, um, and talk about the syllabus in terms of the expectations, the policies uh, for the course, um, and talk about the course website. So we're not going over any actual content today, and so I, I don't expect you to have to take any notes. Uh, we'll start that on Thursday, okay? Um, so before I begin, are there any questions I can answer before we uh, get started? No, just, uh, yeah, just, just chill there, just, just, just. yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, so the uh, so I think right now um, there's only 30 seats in the class, I think. So uh, I should be able to add a, a decent amount of people from the wait list. Uh, I'm gonna say maybe around like seven or eight people from the wait list, just cause this, just cause this classroom is a little bit small. So there's, there's a limit to how many we can add, you know, top five, six, seven, eight in the wait list, I think you should be okay. Uh, so I'll probably start the converse, that conversation with the department tomorrow. Um, cause you know, they don't want to add too many seats to the courses. So I think they're going to want to wait and see until next week to see how many people are still on the wait list. Um, so I'll, I'll probably have, I'll probably start that conversation tomorrow. And then next week, I think probably we'll, we'll start adding. Yeah. All right, any other uh, questions before we get started? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, so my name, um, I've already introduced myself, is uh, Professor Justin Tran. Uh, I'm not too picky about um, what you call me. Uh, I think most people just opt for Professor or Dr. Tran, but you can call me, you know, whatever you want, whatever's most comfortable for you. Um, my office is in the engineering building, so I've, I've officially moved. If people were my student last semester, that was a, that was a saga. Um, but I'm, fi I'm finally all moved, so I'm in the other building now, so I'm on second floor. So if you come out of the elevator on the, in the engineering building, you turn right, and then I'm kind of in that little um, cubby of, of faculty offices um, on that right side. Um, I grew up around here, so I'm very familiar with the Fullerton area. I had quite a few of my friends from high school attend Fullerton, so um, it's really cool to be here and, and to kind of, uh, you know, be close to home. Uh, my parents live, you know, 10 miles from here. And so I see them about every other week. They're very happy to see me, I hope. Um, and so, you know, that's that's a great thing. Um, all of my education has been in mechanical engineering, all the way from my bachelor's, my master's, my PhD. Um, so it's a field I'm very, I'm very um, you know, well familiar with. I have a lot of friends that work in the industry. Uh, and my research interests, uh, very relevant to this class, are in applying engineering tools for biomedical applications, particularly heart and blood disease, which is where we're going to learn a lot of in this class. So you'll learn, you'll learn a lot about my research in this class, which is, uh, you know, uh, hopefully something that, that's interesting to you. Okay, uh, learning objectives. And so uh, if you've taken me before, you should be very familiar with these. But if you've uh, never had me before, uh, I like to use learning objectives a lot. And what these are is, is, is you know, at the beginning of class every day, uh, I'm going to be posting a list of learning objectives of, you know, what we plan to cover. Uh, and you can almost think of them as kind of like an outline of what we're going to do for that specific day. Okay. Um, so I always encourage people. So if you're, if you, if you're able to make it to the lecture early, um, when you open up your notes, I would definitely write down the learning objectives for the day, just so that, you know, when you're going back, you're looking at your notes, you're studying for the exams. Um, you know, you have kind of an easy way to kind of organize in terms of, you know, you look at the top, you look at the learning objectives and say, this is, that's, those are the things that we covered for that day. Okay. And if you, if you read the learning objectives, you'll, uh, you'll see that I write them in a very specific way as well. And so I, I always start each learning objective with a verb of some kind. Right? And the reason I do this is, is I want to basically demonstrate to you a very specific skill or a very specific type of knowledge that I want you to learn and to demonstrate from that specific lecture, okay? So for example, we have, we have four learning objectives for today. Uh, the first of which is to describe the role and importance of, a, of the cardiovascular system, okay? And, and if you read that, it almost reads like as if it were like an exam question or like a question I can ask on the home, right? And that's very intentional. And so I want you to basically read these learning objectives and almost kind of look for the answers to that objective throughout the class, right? Uh, of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of other really important things we should cover in the classes, we, we cover in each class as well. But the learning objectives are kind of your way to kind of organize the information and to kind of um, know kind of what the most important things and highlights of that day are. Okay. And so these are learning objectives we're going to do for today. Um, and, you know, at the beginning of every lecture, definitely pay attention to those and write them down. If, if you have a chance. Okay. okay. Uh, so now we get into what this class is, right? And so this class uh, is called Computational Cardiovascular Engineering. Uh, this is a class that I've 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 proposed, so this is kind of like you know my uh, my baby, right? Um, and in a nutshell, you know what this class is all about is is to use our knowledge of fluid mechanics and computer programming. You know both of these are um, topics that you've learned in your previous engineering classes to better learn about and design products for and improve outcomes for the cardiovascular system. Your cardiovascular system, referring to your heart, your blood vessels, your blood flow. Um, all that stuff inside your body, which is a very essential system. Okay, and so breaking down the three um, the three words of this uh, of this uh, class, uh, I know it's not the easiest class to say, and and, and I always get criticism about it, but I picked these three words intentionally. 
right? Uh, so the first, the first uh, word here is computational, uh, and that refers to the type of engineering tools and software that we're going to use. Um, and so if you've taken a, like a finite element class from me before, you, you're probably familiar with something like ANSYS, you know, that I do a lot of research in, in, in that field. Okay? And so we'll be using software, not, not ANSYS specifically, but we'll be using another software. Okay? But it's the same idea uh, to basically use computers to simulate kind of a real life phenomenon uh, without any physical test. Okay. Uh, the next part is cardiovascular. So the cardiovascular refers to our engineering system of interest. And so in this case, it's, it's a biological system. Um, so that is the heart, the vessels, the blood, all of these things that, that, a, that a human needs to survive. Okay. Uh, and the last part of this is engineering. And so engineering is kind of what you guys are all kind of working towards in your degree. And so, um, you know, solving real world, real world issues, okay. Um, using science, technology, math, and, and all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, the only difference here is that, you know, the problems that we're going to be solving for or, or what we're going to be um, doing are actually, you know, um, cardiovascular diseases. And so these are diseases that people suffer from. Um, and I think a lot of times people don't really associate the two. They don't associate kind of engineering work, which people, you know, normally associate with like cars, planes, you know, things like that with the biological systems. But, you know, there's there's a lot of overlap and there's a lot that we can do. Uh, especially in, in the realm of, you know, designing medical devices to help um, in this, in this realm. Okay, uh, so let's introduce, so let's introduce some kind of some core concepts. And so let's, let's first talk about the cardiovascular system, right? So the cardiovascular system basically refers to the vast network of heart, blood vessels inside the human body, okay? Um, and so, you know, as, as, as you all probably know, your cardiovascular system is really important for your survival. And taking care of it is, is something that you need to do kind of constantly you need to exercise, eat the right food, things like that. Okay. Um, the reason for that is that the cardiovascular system is, is your primary way of transporting things across your body, right? Um, and so when when a material or when a like when a when a nutrient or when a resource needs to go from one part of your body to another, um, for the most part, you know, that mostly travels through the through the through your blood vessels. And so that includes things like oxygen, right? Oxygen that you take in through the lungs that need to get to your muscles and you get, need to get to your organs that travels through the cardiovascular system. Uh, nutrients, you know, all the, you know, calories and things that you eat from your food, you know, that travels through your cardiovascular system, right? Enzymes, hormones, and even heat, you know, all these are transported through the cardiovascular system. And so it's, it's a lot of people call it the lifeline of, of the human body. Um, and that's, that's not too far from the truth, right? And so... You know, that's this is how this is your primary means of transport. Right? Um, some people even call it like you know the roadways of your body. So people people kind of um, draw the analogy between freeways and roads, right? And so that's um, that's that's another great way to look at. It, okay, uh, and so proper maintenance through diet and exercise is, is essential, right? Especially as you get older. So taking care of your cardiovascular system gets more complicated because you have you start to uh, have issues like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, right? That affect the health and performance of your cardiovascular system. Okay. Uh, and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's always really interesting to see just how much, how many blood vessels are actually bundled up inside your body, right? Even, even an image like this doesn't really do it justice. So if you were to take, you know, in a very, in a typical human, all of your blood vessels and kind of line them up, you know, end to end, uh, you would actually reach, you know, 60,000 miles uh, or 100,000 kilometers. So there's a lot of blood vessels kind of bundled up inside the human body. Okay, so next we have cardiovascular disease, right? And so usually usually when you're talking about the cardiovascular system in, in kind of a normal context, people have some kind of disease, right? And so they have either some plaque that builds up um, or you know something, something wrong with their cardiovascular system, okay? Uh, and so what we're gonna learn in this class is that the, the, the term disease actually refers to a very wide range of abnormalities or conditions that you may have in the body, okay? Because when you talk about cardiovascular disease, you know, what you're really referring to is any abnormality in the cardiovascular system that impedes healthy function, okay? Um, so things like high blood pressure, aneurysms, heart attacks, stroke, all of these kind of fall under that category, right? Uh, and even to this day, um, you know, COVID gave it a good run for its money, but even to this day, it's, it's still the leading cause of death worldwide. And so we have about 17 million deaths in the world um, and about 600,000 of those in, in the U.S. each year. Um, there's also the financial burden as well, because, you know, when you have cardiovascular disease, a lot of times you have to stay home from work, you have to kind of see the doctor and that costs a lot of money, right? And so in terms of financial burden, you know, we estimate that it costs the U.S. about $500 million um, each year. 
Um, seems really low. I think I think I need to update that that number. Um, and so, in other words, you know, there's there's a lot that that we can do to kind of you know, not only solve these issues but make them better for for people. Um, and and the idea is that you know if we better understand disease mechanisms, we better understand the cardiovascular system, we can lead to better. All right. So where so where do we fit in? Right. So where do engineers fit in? Um, so there's a strong relationship between fluid mechanics and cardiovascular medicine because blood is a fluid. Um, and so good understanding of fluid mechanics, 333, is, is actually really clutch for, um, for, for blood flow. Uh, and you'd be surprised. And so I, I have some, some buddies that have gone through you know, med school and have studied cardiology. You know, they actually learn fluid mechanics. I mean, I mean, granted, you know, probably I think 70% of what they learn is wrong, but, you know, they have the, they have the right idea. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's, that's where we come in to actually show them, you know, real, what real fluid mechanics actually is, right? Um, and so, because a lot of, a lot of what you learn in fluid mechanics, things like pressure, viscous shear stresses, you know, these often act as the triggers for a lot of cardiovascular disease, things like plaque buildup um, or aneurysm formation, things like that, okay? Um, the, the difficult thing, though, is that, you know, even though there's a strong link between fluid mechanics and, and cardiovascular disease, it's often really hard to quantify these fluid mechanics because you know it's 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 not it's not the easiest thing to stick a probe inside someone um, to measure their blood pressure things like that right you can you can measure it outside but there's only so much you can do um, and so you know um, this is kind of where we we come in where we can use a lot of our engineering tools to kind of uh, quantify and and measure a lot of these quantities that doctors kind of have a hard time uh, measuring. Okay. And the way we do that is through computers, right? And so, um, you know, um, you may have heard of a, of a technology called computational fluid dynamics. Uh, in fact, some of you may be, I, I know Dr. Myrell is teaching an elective uh, for that. Actually, it might be taking place now. But, uh, um, you know, we there is a way for us to use computers to simulate, blood, uh, simulate fluid flow, right? And traditionally, this has been used in the aerospace industry a lot. Uh, just because it's it's really hard to design airplanes with very complicated airflows, and so we need to use we need to simulate in the computer. But we can use that same technology um, for blood flow. Right? And the idea basically is that you know we set up a we set up the problem in a way where you know the computer can perform you know lots of these kind of calculations to, to simulate this this blood flow. Uh, and so here's a little bit more about CFD. And so you see it a lot in the aerospace industry and in the automotive industry, right? Um, and the idea is to sit, is to solve the Navier-Stokes equations using computers. We'll talk a lot more about CFD once once we get to the projects and stuff. Okay, um, and so if you if you look at how the world is kind of changing nowadays, you're 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 going to see kind of a big emergence of um, you know biomedical companies, bioengineering companies, um, and so what that's showing you is that engineers are playing a bigger and bigger role in, in medicine. And so let's take a device like this. And so this is a surgical robotics device, right? Um, and so it's it's a device that's not necessarily replacing surgeons, but but basically aiding them in the operating room so that they can perform kind of more precise surgeries. Uh, and what we're seeing is that this is kind of extending the life of some very um, skillful skillful uh, skillful surgeons as well, um, because you know all the kind of the fine the fine tuning, all the you know uh, real delicate work is done by the machine uh, rather than kind of a you know old guy. So, you know, that's, uh, this is nice. Right? So medical device design and manufacturing is a very fast growing industry. Um, I think usually the people that take this class or you know, people, a lot of them are interested in working for those kinds of um, companies. You may have heard of a company called Edwards Life Science, and some of you may have a senior design project with them this year. Uh, but there's also companies like Medtronic, Baxter, um, you know, uh, HeartFlow uh, in Northern California. You know, there's, there's a lot of companies that are, that are using, um, you know, hiring more and more engineers to kind of do their, their work, okay? Okay, um, so before we move on to the syllabus, I, I wanted to give a few examples from my research to kind of show you um, kind of how an engineer plays a role in this in this kind of medicine, okay? Um, so the first, uh, the first uh, big area that, uh, that my research goes into is in cardiovascular um, disease, okay? Um, so even though we have a lot of information about how cardiovascular disease uh, forms, how it affects the human body, right? We all know that high blood pressure is generally bad, high cholesterol is generally bad, right? Um, we still don't really know a lot about how cardiovascular disease actually starts, um, you know, from you know from from the formation, just because 
you know, it's 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 hard to get data. Right? But using simulations, what we can do is we can we can simulate the blood flow and we can kind of predict where you know cardiovascular disease will have an issue. Right? Because a lot of times when people have cardiovascular disease, uh, they have high blood pressure, they have they have high amounts of plaque. You know, it's usually at a stage that's kind of too late where they're, where they're actually experiencing symptoms. They have chest pain. They have you know they have you know high blood pressure and things like that. And so the idea with simulations is that if we can if we can take you know a normal healthy person and we can run simulations on them, you know we can kind of you know tell tell certain people to look out. It's like you, you know your geometry is like this. Maybe you should you should cut down on on sugars, things like that, right? To kind of prevent the disease from happening uh, in the first place. Okay. So there's a lot of interest in this. Um, you know, obviously, you know, because a lot of people don't want to experience having to go through you know, a heart attack to, to uh, um, you know, to, to, to learn that they have high blood pressure, right? Um, they want to know early so they can take steps to prevent, right? So there's a, a lot of research in this um, and a lot of um, areas for, for improvement. Another area that's, uh, um, that's very popular nowadays is medical device design, right? And so these are, um, a medical device is any kind of, you know, man-made object or man-made tool that goes inside a person's body to help with their, uh, with their health in some way, okay? And so what you're seeing here is actually a simulation from one of my, uh, one of my good friends, one of my colleagues. And so she uh, did simulations of artificial valves. And so what you're seeing here is, is, uh, is, a, is a heart valve uh, that's not naturally within the human body. So this is, this is one that, uh, that is created by, by humans, right? It's normally put in to replace a faulty valve. And we're seeing, you know, how that valve is performing relative to a natural valve. And so, you know, this is something that, you know, this is probably, I think, the first thing that people think of in terms of, you know, how um, an engineer can help within medicine with designing devices like these. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of really interesting work to do here as well, not only in, you know, coming up with new devices, but also, you know, taking existing devices and seeing how can we optimize their design, how can we optimize their construction, optimize their materials, things like that. Okay. So there's a lot of really exciting, interesting work here as well. All right, so uh, and the third area here is virtual surgery. Um, so this one we're we're not going to get too much into in this class, just because it's it's a little bit more of an advanced topic. Um, but you know you can imagine that if you have a digital platform, you can use these to try some things out that you normally wouldn't want to try in a human first, right? Because um, that's not exactly a good conversation to have with your doctor. Where it's like, yeah, your grandma's sick, and we have this thing we kind of want to try, but we haven't tried it before, so we're going to try it on your grandma. Um, and you're like, hell no, you're not going to do that. Um, so, you know, having a digital platform, having a, a place where you can simulate these things, see how it's going to work out is really valuable, um, to kind of, you know, um, kind of, to kind of like fast track a lot of really interesting, um, surgeries, um, to that normally wouldn't, uh, have, have, have seen the light of day. Right? Um, the world of sur sur surgery is actually very interesting because there was, there was a, there was a period of very rapid innovation where, you know, we didn't really have a lot of rules in terms of what you could try on people. And so, uh, and so people just tried anything. And so we, we learned a lot of new surgeries in that period, but a lot of people died as a result too. Um, and then, you know, um, people got smart and they're like, oh, we shouldn't try these things with young people. Uh, and so a lot of that innovation, you know, um, stopped for good reason, right? And so you shouldn't be trying out new things on, on people. Um, so it's, it's actually very hard nowadays to, to get a new surgery, even if it shows a lot of promise. Uh, and what we're seeing now is that, you know, a digital platform and engineering tools are playing a big role in, 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 that, in that space. So really been kind of uh, exciting times in there too. All right. Um, so normally this is kind of the point where we kind of, I have you guys brainstorm a little bit, but, you know, um, I think we'll kind of skip it for today. So I, I want to kind of talk more about the, the syllabus, uh, but I'll kind of pause here for a second. Are there, are there any questions that you guys have on just anything that we've talked about so far? I love this class. I mean, I mean, it's it's what I it's what I research, and so you know, I I didn't get to teach it last year, so I was a little bummed about that. But uh, I get to teach it again this year, so as you can see, I I you know I'm really passionate about this stuff. So really excited to be able to uh, share that with you guys. Okay, um, so industry perspective, and so you know, I have this slide here just because uh, you know, um, we're we you know where I'm coming from is kind of interesting. I think kind of relative to where a lot of you your goals are. Where I come from, I come into this um, space with a very kind of research academic mindset, and so I'm 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 looking to do research. I'm 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 you know I'm looking to do you know gain new knowledge and things like that. Um, 
it's very different than I think an industry perspective where, you know, they're a lot more interested in taking this technology and finding applications for it. Um, and so I wanted to have this slide here to kind of show you one example of, of, a, of a company that has really kind of, you know, used this computational technology as its calling card and, and really kind of diving at first into it. Um, so this is a company called Heartflow. Um, so they're based in Northern California. They're in uh, Mountain View. Um, so very much deep in Silicon Valley. And so what they do is that they use these computational simulations to um, basically stratif um, to basically uh, risk stratify patients for coronary artery disease. Right? Um, so if you look at this diagram here, right, um, these kind of branches that kind of come off here, you can't really see it in this image, but you know where these all these branches are kind of all surrounding your heart. Um, and these blood vessels are actually responsible for supplying your heart muscle with, with the oxygen that it needs to, to pump. Um, and so these, these vessels get diseased uh, a lot. Um, and if they get diseased, it's, it's, it, this is, this is usually one of the main, um, you know, indicators for a heart attack, because if your heart can't get the oxygen and nutrients that it needs, your heart muscle kind of spazzes up and then it, 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 you know, that's, that's what causes a heart attack. Um, so there's, there's intense interest in this, and there's a lot of interest in terms of, you know, trying to catch these patients before they have that they have a cardiac event, um, you know, just, just to kind of save a lot more life. The, the problem is that once you do find the disease, um, you know, fixing it can also be a, a big challenge as well, because this often requires open heart surgery, which has its own risk, right? And so it's, you know, it's, you're in this kind of very delicate situation where, you know, you have these patients where you know we're at risk, but are they at risk enough to risk surgery? So, you know, both options are kind of bad. And so the, and so the tests that, that doctors usually do is they compute something called fractional flow reserve, which basically means that, you know, if, if you want to compute this traditionally, it means taking a probe, you know, most times it means sticking up your groin, which is not comfortable at all, and then, sna and then snaking that, that probe all the way to your heart and measuring the pressure throughout this, throughout this system, right? And if what you see is that you see a big pressure drop from one area to the next, you know, and that pressure drop is big enough, that tells the doctor that, all right, we need to operate from this guy because he's about to have a heart attack soon. Um, the problem with this is that, you know, not only is that test very uncomfortable and, and uh, um, not very pleasant, um, it's, it's, there can be a long waiting line to get this done because, you know, hospitals only have so many resources that they can devote because it normally takes a whole team of with like anesthesia and, and, and numbing and things like that to, to get, just to even get that data. And you haven't, and you haven't even gotten the surgery yet, right? And so what happens that is that a lot of patients kind of sit waiting for this test to be done. And then they have a heart attack and then, you know, it's, it's kind of too late. And so what this company is, is aiming to do is to kind of help with that bottom. So they, they, what they do is they simulate, right? Uh, they simulate the blood flow in, in these uh, in these geometries so that, you know, virtually they can say, all right, this guy has a big pressure drop. So you don't have to run the test. You should just send this guy to surgery right away, right? And what they, what they tout is that, you know, within a couple of hours, you can go from, you know, a patient um, coming in to, a medical decision right away whether they need surgery or not. So, you know, that's kind of the space that they're that they're working. It, honestly, it's a very, it's a very specific, a very niche kind of application, but it's 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 gained a lot of momentum and they've done really well over the last few years. Okay. Um, so I did want to mention that um, you know, I Heartflow is a company I actually know quite well too, because I, I do have a few buddies that are working there. Uh, I'm trying to get one of my uh, one of my friends, he's he's been working there for the past five years. I want to see if he can come give a guest talk. Uh, he did, he did, he did one for me three years ago. So uh, I'm trying to see if he can uh, uh, come talk again, but um, his price has gone up. I, last time I only had to buy him a burrito, but he said uh, uh, now is uh, inflation. So I have to get him something nicer than a burrito. So let's see. Um, any questions on this before we jump into the syllabus? Okay. All right. So let's talk about the syllabus. Okay. So now that we have an idea of what the class is about, let's talk about a little bit about how the class is organized and the policies, the office hours, and kind of all that stuff that you kind of expect on the first day. Okay, office hours. And so uh, my office, uh, like I mentioned, is in the other building, right? Um, and so I do um, have office hours in person and on Zoom, uh, with the exception of Mondays. And so Mondays, I, I'm usually not here in the morning. Um, and so Monday office hours are gonna be virtual only. And so for those ones, you can only attend on Zoom. But for all the other office hours, the Tuesday, Thursday office hours, you can attend either in person or on Zoom. Okay. Uh, and oh, I wanted to mention as well, um, 
that for the lectures, and so I know a lot of you are on Zoom right now, for the lectures, I plan on streaming them on Zoom um, for the entire semester. And so uh, for the lectures, you're welcome to either attend in person or on Zoom. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, the only day that I do expect you to be in person is going to be on the midterm exam day. So that's the only day I want everyone to be in the classroom. Besides that, you can attend on Zoom, in person, whatever is more convenient for you. Uh, so office hours, what, what I usually use office hours for is that if you're confused about anything we talked about in the class, um, anything that you're confused about on the homework, you have questions on the, uh, uh, about the exam, um, you know, office hours are kind of the best way to kind of talk, our best way to kind of get help with, with those things, okay? Um, or if you would just want to stop by and say hi, that's, that's fine too. I get lonely sometimes. Like today, no one came to office hours, so it's kind of lonely. So. All right, course learning objectives. And so um, you're seeing learning objectives again. Uh, but these learning objectives here are going to be for the entire course. Right? And so by the end of the course, by the time we reach May, um, you know, uh, middle of May, uh, commencement, everything, you know, you should be able to do all of these five things here. Okay? We'll go over them as we as we go throughout the class, but I think some of these may not make sense right now, but, you know, they're uh, they're there. OK, homeworks. Um, these are all homeworks and exams. So these are all the things you're going to be turning in for this class. Okay? Um, so there are six homework assignments, um, six homework assignments that I primarily grade on uh, completion. Um, and so, uh, you know, I don't I don't grade them for correctness for the most part, unless unless I see that, you know, um, that you barely did it. OK, uh, but as long as you give an you give an honest effort on the homework assignment, I'll give you full credit for it. Uh, there's one midterm exam. Um, the midterm exam date is going to be near the end of the semester, and so that's going to be on Thursday, April 25th, okay? Uh, one midterm project and one final project. Uh, the midterm project is actually part of your final project, so you can almost think of it as like kind of one big project we're going to be working on throughout the entire semester. The midterm project is just kind of a check-in that, you know, that you need to have completed by a certain date, okay? All right, um, so homework policy, I do drop the lowest homework just because uh, I know that, you know, uh, spring semester especially can get really crazy, especially for you seniors that are graduating. So I want to give you a little flexibility. So if you don't, if you uh, miss a deadline, uh, you don't turn a homework in, it's fine. You know, it'll it'll drop automatically from your grade. Uh, but please do them all. Okay. Uh, this class in particular, you know, I, I I try to make each of the homework assignments pretty interesting uh, in terms of you know what you're going to be doing. So you know, um, if you even if you miss the deadline, you know, it would still be good to do it. Okay. Uh, like I said, the midterm project is going to be kind of a check-in and kind of an assessment of kind of how you're working on the final project. Okay. Uh, in particular, you're going to be making a geometric model. So you're going to be making a, you can think of it almost like a CAD model, uh, but we're going to be doing it in kind of a, a very special way. Okay. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. And those, and those are all the due dates for, for everything. So midterm projects going to be due, I think that's a Sunday right before spring break. And so that's Sunday, April 7th. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's the Sunday right after spring break. So you have spring break to work on it if you want. Um, the midterm exam is gonna be a, a few weeks after that. So that's gonna be Thursday, April 25th. And then the final project, your final report and, and your final simulation results, those are gonna be due on Monday, May 20th. Okay? So that's the Monday after finals week after. So um, just because I know you guys are really busy during finals week. So I try to give you a little bit of extra flexibility uh, in terms of that last weekend and that last Monday if you need that extra time to finish. Um, any questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right, grades. Okay, so here, uh, here are how the grades are going to be broken down. So the homeworks are worth 10% of the grade. Um, the midterm project is going to be worth 15%. Um, the, mid, the midterm exam is going to be worth 35% of the grade. And the final project is worth 40%. Okay? But remember, the midterm project and final project, those two kind of go together. And so you can kind of, you can kind of almost think of that, whole, that entire project is worth about 55% of your grades. Okay? Uh, and then based on your percentage grades, um, once everything's in, I assign letter grades according to the scale. So I think this is a fairly standard scale. Uh, I round up. And so if you have like, you know, 92.5, I do round that up to an A. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Uh, so I do all that kind of automatic. All right, textbook. Um, so I will, I will be providing a course reader to you. And so I think that's already on the Canvas site. So that'll be kind of the main resource. Uh, I will also be using this other textbook here, although it's not required. It's called Cardiovascular Biomechanics. It's by uh, Peter Hoskins. Okay, uh, It's a Springer textbook from 2017. I don't know if he's written another edition, um, but just find anyone. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to change it that much. Okay? 
Uh, and just like I just like I always do with, with textbooks, um, you know, um, I always say you should never pay full price for a textbook. Um, the textbook industry just may as well be the mafia. They, you know, it's been it's been over 10 years since I graduated school and I still hold bitterness for that $400 physics textbook that we hardly ever use. And I couldn't return it anyway. So, um, so you know, I, I'm, I don't want to put you guys in that situation. So, you know, if you want to get a textbook, try to find a cheap one. But at the same time, you know, I'm providing you with the course reader. I post all my lecture notes. And so I want to say that you don't need the textbook, but sometimes it's good to have kind of an additional reference um, just because the textbook goes in a little bit more detail than my lecture notes. So um, if you want that additional reference, if you want to learn more, this is the textbook. Um, try to Just try to find a cheap one. Software. So we'll be using a lot of software in this class. And so um, hence the name cardiovascular, I mean, uh, computational. Um, and so uh, the main software we'll be using is actually the second one called SimVascular. Uh, so you've probably never heard of that software. Um, it is a primarily a research software. Um, it's free, so you don't have to pay anything, right? And so uh, throughout the class, we'll go over you know, how to download it, how to install it, how to use it, right? So that'll be a kind of a big portion of the class. Uh, but we'll also be doing a bit of MATLAB as well. And so, um, and so you should know the basics of MATLAB. We'll do a little bit of a review when, when, once it's relevant. Um, you know, we're not going to do too much MATLAB. Like we're not going to be writing, you know, any long codes or anything. But there are some tools within MATLAB that are useful for what we're going to do. And so um, MATLAB is going to be a little bit light. Most of the software is going to be within SimVascular. But um, SimVascular is, is very, it's, it's, um, it's more similar to SOLIDWORKS than it is MATLAB. So we're not actually going to be coding anything. It's kind of a graphical user interface with, with buttons that you can click, um, and so you know it's it's um, you know it's not it's not that bad, and it's and it's designed kind of for students and researchers to use, and so um, you know, it's uh, it's nice. Uh, and and in fact, your final project um, that you're going to be working on is is actually using Sebastian. So you know, um, being familiar with Sebastian is, is definitely good. Uh, speaking of which, here is your midterm and final project. And so your midterm and final project is basically to uh, construct a cardiovascular model, right, um, and run a simulation. And so the way that you're going to do this is that I'm going to give you a medical image data. Um, apparently, it's going to be like a CT scan of someone's blood vessels, okay? And then from that uh, medical image data, you're going to construct uh, a, a basically a digital model of their blood vessels and uh, run simulation and then and then comment on how it affects you know their cardiovascular disease affects their blood pressure um, things like that okay um, so it is it is essentially it is computational fluid dynamics and so we are going to be doing cfd uh, and in fact you guys are all going to be running it on a supercomputer as well so i'm going to work um, during the semester get to get you guys accounts uh, on a supercomputer that i work with and so because uh, usually cfd is, is too expensive to run on a home computer and so uh, we're going to need to use a, a supercomputer to run these simulations. And so uh, you'll get a little bit of high performance computing experience from this process. As well. um, any questions on, on this so far? Same with that, so you consider like that CFD program? It is, yes. So it's 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 part CAD program, part CFD. Is it, are you going to ask for the computer remotely? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we we have we have one here on campus. Um, but it's it's owned by NSM, so there's a lot of politics involved. So we, I've tried I've tried in the past, but it's it's kind of more difficult than it's worth. So we're using a national supercomputer. It's actually in San Diego. It's actually pretty close, uh, but we're not going down to San Diego just, just for a moment. Yet. I wish we can get <laughs> we can get tacos over down there. <laughs> Any other questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right, Canvas. Um, so uh, Canvas is going to be my main way to kind of uh, get content to you guys. And so basically any lecture notes, any homework assignments, homework solutions, uh, exam solutions, study guides, um, some vascular tutorials, um, everything, everything that I, I make for this class, I'm going to post it on Canvas, right? And so uh, it's, it's, it's definitely good to get familiar with kind of the format of, of Canvas. Uh, if you've taken my class before, you should be very familiar with it. It's, it's, I use the same format. Uh, but we're going to, but after this, we're going to take a tour of the Canvas site so that, you know, um, so that you kind of know where, where everything is, okay? So Canvas is definitely your first stop shop for, for everything, okay? Um, I'm also going to be using Canvas to communicate with all of you. And so I use the announcements feature on Canvas. Um, and so the way that works is that I type up a message on Canvas, I send it through an announcement, and then it should be emailed to all of you. So I think a lot of you probably got the email from Canvas already, right? 
Um, so definitely check your emails from uh, uh, from Canvas. Um, I, I I try I try not to spam you. Some sometimes sometimes I, I send two emails in a week and I, I feel really bad, but I try to limit it to just one email every two or three weeks or so. Okay? It's primarily when you know the due dates are coming up, when like midterm projects do, midterm exams coming up. That's when I'll usually email you with kind of information and kind of reminders for, for that. Okay. All right, course policies. So these are all kind of the miscellaneous policies that I have for the class. Uh, late homeworks. So I do accept late homeworks. And so if you miss the due date, um, you know, no worries. You can still turn the homework in. Uh, but I do, I do dock points every day, right? And so for each day that the homework is late, uh, I dock 10% uh, from the maximum allowable points. And so if you're like two days late submitting your homework, the maximum that you can get is 80%, okay? Um, so I do leave the Canvas site open, so you should be able to submit your homeworks late on Canvas. Um, but if for some reason that's not working, or if it's uh, or if it's 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 past that deadline, or it's closed, or whatever, uh, you can always scan and email your homeworks to me directly as well. That's that's perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, regrades. Um, I do make mistakes sometimes when I grade stuff. Uh, it's not intentional. I promise you. I know some people don't believe me, but I promise you, I don't do it on purpose. Um, but I do make mistakes, you know, adding, it could be simple, just adding points up. Uh, maybe I mark, a, mark a question off, um, you know, uh, much more than, than, than is fair. So I'm, I'm always happy to take a look again. And so don't be afraid, you know, if, if you think I, if I, if you think I did something wrong with grading, you know, please let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm always happy to look at it. Um, the only requirement that I have is that you, you talk to me within a week after I give the assignment back to you. Okay. Uh, the reason for this is that, you know, when, when I grade assignments, you know, part of, part of the learning process is, you know, not just you submitting work, but also kind of getting feedback and, and kind of taking that and learning from it and applying that in, in for the rest of the class. Uh, and the thing with feedback is that it's not really useful, you know, if you don't apply it in a timely manner. Um, and so, you know, I, it, and so it happens every semester where, you know, it's, it's the last week of the semester. And you know, students are you're looking at your grade and you're thinking, oh man, I need a few more points to you know bump me up to an A. You know, like I, what if I ask for more points from from homework one? Um, and I'm like, oh, come on, man, that, that ship has sailed. That ship sailed, you know, three months ago. So, um, and so you know, if if you know, I'm I'm always happy to look at it and 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 to give more points. More often than not, you know, I, I you know I'm I'm very happy to give more points back for uh, for for regrades. But you have to you have to you have to talk to me within a week. Okay? And that's that's my only requirement. Um, for emails, um, your emails are your primary way to communicate with me. Um, I, I'm, I'm usually pretty good with emails. I, I usually respond to you within day, within a day, uh, sometimes within 30 seconds if I happen to be on my computer. Uh, the only thing that I ask is that if you're asking, if you're emailing me with a, with a question or an issue uh, with this class, that you put the course name or you put the course number in the in the subject line for the email. Uh, so for this class, it'll be EGME 442. Okay. Um, that way, it's, it's a little bit easier for me to kind of organize my email. So sometimes I get, you know, a few dozen emails that at once. And so, um, and so I try to kind of be organized. So, you know, if you can, if you can kind of, if you can kind of help me out a bit with that, then um, it'll help me kind of respond to your emails a bit sooner. Okay. All right. Any questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right. Academic dishonesty. So, so um, I will say for this class, it's, it's, Usually, usually it hasn't been an issue before just because this class is pretty unique, um, you know, and, and, and generally it's an elective. So, you know, um, hopefully everyone's kind of excited to be here. Um, but, you know, um, still, still, I do have to, I do have to say it that, you know, we have very strict uh, policies um, kind of at every level of the university, you know, department, college, um, university, you know, even all the way up to kind of the provost and the president's office with, with this stuff. And so, you know, there's, there's really not a lot of flexibility. So, you know, if, if, if there's any kind of academic dishonesty in terms of, you know, um, in terms of copying off someone, in terms of using AI to write your reports or anything like that, um, or even, um, you know, um, paying someone to do your work too, that's happened before. Uh, if any of those things happen and I catch you, you know, it's, it's, it, the, the punishments are pretty severe. You know, at the, at the very least, it's gonna result in a zero on that assignment. And if it's on something big like an exam or a project, then it's, it can result in up to an F in the course with a referral to so there's, there's, you know, that's, that's just the policy. Um, but I will say this, that, you know, I'm, especially for this class, for this is an elective class, you know, you guys don't have to be here. There, you guys have a lot of other options in terms of electives that you could have chosen, right? Um, and so I want to make sure that you guys are having, you know, a positive experience in this class and you, 
take away something that you that you're proud to 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 show, right? Um, and I've always felt that my job here as as an instructor is to kind of help you guys and and to you know ensure your guys' success, okay? It's success and learning as, as much as possible. So if you ever feel like in this class where you you feel like you're falling behind, you feel like you need to cheat, copy off someone to kind of catch up and 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 to do well. You know, I, the only thing that I ask is that you come talk to me first, because if you talk to me first, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we can do to kind of help you get back on track in terms of, you know, maybe we develop a study plan for you. Um, maybe we, you know, maybe I move some deadlines around to make it a little bit easier on your work schedule. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that we, there's a lot that I can do to help you out. Um, but I can only do this if, if you come talk to me. So the only thing I ask is that, you know, please come talk to me if you're, if you're struggling, um, if you resort to academic dishonesty, you know, there's, there's really nothing I can do at that point. It's, it's kind of out of my hands. Um, so please come talk to me and, and I promise you, I'll do everything I can to help you. Um, you know, I always tell people I'm, I'm not here to judge you, you know, uh, what, whatever your life circumstance, whatever you're doing in, in life, you know, that's, that's not for me to say anything or comment on, you know, I'm, I'm here just to help you succeed in this course. Okay. I've had people come to me in like week 12. It's like, honestly, I haven't heard anything. Um, I don't know if I'm, I, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm screwed in this class. Can you help me out? And, 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 you know, we worked something out. Right. And so, um, I mean, granted he didn't get an A in the course, but you know, he, you know, he was able to pass and, and he worked his butt off for the last part of the semester. And then, you know, he, you know, he, he, he did it. And so I, the only thing I asked, so, you know, I'm here to help you guys. So that's, that's my, that's my main. Okay, and so the last uh, the last thing um, that I have here is is it's kind of a tradition I've, I I have in all my classes is to um, have the first homework assignment just be a simple email introduction. Um, so I know I know I know a lot of you, you know, I know a lot of you were, were my students last semester, but even still, you know, even if you even if uh, even if you've already sent this email before, um, you know, I you know send me another one. You know, you're not the same person you were six months ago. So I'm I'm interested in seeing you know uh, what you've been up to since then. How's life going, right? And for those of you who, who've never had me as an instructor before, um, you know, I, I want to get to know you, right? And so, you know, the, I think the, the nice thing about electives is that, you know, I have a lot of freedom. I have a lot of flexibility in terms of how I can kind of guide this class. Um, and so I want to hear from you guys in terms of, you know, what your, what your goals are, what your expectations are, what you want to see in this course. And a lot of times, you know, I, I change what I do based on kind of what people say, right? And so if you want to, if you want to learn more about medical devices, we can definitely do that, right? If you want to learn more about CFP, we can definitely do that, right? And so talk to me, right? And so send me an email, tell me what you're looking forward to in this class. If you're stressed about anything, if you're worried about anything or concerned about anything for this class, uh, definitely let me know as well, right? And we can, we can, we can definitely do some stuff there. Uh, I know some, you know, even though, even though we're doing, uh, very light MATLAB. I know just the thought of MATLAB kind of scares people. And so if you're, if you're worried about that, you know, let me know. We can, we can do a bit more of a refresher. Um, I can give you more starter codes, uh, things like that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so just, just, uh, just send me an email. So I have these questions here. You don't have to answer these. You know, I, I think usually some people, people actually think of this kind of literally as an assignment and they answer all four questions using like a, um, a chat GPT thing to, to make it sound nice. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to sound nice. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not grading you on grammar or spelling or anything like that. You know, I just want to get to know you, right? It's, and, uh, you know, because just because for a lot of you, you know, I'm meeting you for the first time. We're going to be together for this whole semester. It's, it's a long semester. And so, you know, I want to have a good relationship with everybody. <laughs> right? Okay, so the due date for this is it's a little bit far in the future because usually I have this due on the first day uh, or at the end of the first week. Um, but I didn't know I was seeing you guys until 10 p.m. last night when I got the text from the school. And I was like, all right, I got to <laughs> get ready for tomorrow. Um, so the due date is not until the end of next week. But, you know, of course, you're free to send me an email before that. Um, but that's that's the cutoff is going to be next Friday, February 2nd. OK. Um, and don't forget to add for each of me 442 in the subject. All right, um, so we're not done yet. So I, I do want to tour the, uh, the course website just very quickly, but um, are there any questions on you know, anything we covered with the syllabus, the course or anything before we uh, move on? Okay, all right, so let's take a look at the course website. Let's switch it to student view. Okay, so if you go to the Canvas site, uh, this is what you're, you're gonna see. Um, if you're on the wait list and you don't have access to the Canvas site, you can shoot me an email. I can I can add you to the Canvas site just so you have access to the resources in the meantime. Okay. 
You can see here is the, um, the name of the course. This is the time. That's a typo. We're obviously not in CS304. We're in CS309, so I need to fix that. That's because that's, that's where it was last time I taught this two years ago. Okay. Here is a description of the course, but you don't have to read this because you were here today. So that's, that's great. Here are the course learning objectives. Right. Here is the syllabus. And so, you know, all the information that we cover today is, is in the syllabus as well. Right. Um, here is the course reader. And so this will be kind of the primary resource that I'm going to use for, for the class. Uh, I definitely recommend downloading it because you can see it's a, it's a 135 page PDF. Okay. So this was written by my advisor from grad school. And so, um, you know, definitely a, a good resource. Uh, here are the Zoom links. And so if you want to attend the lecture on Zoom, you can do it from here. Here are the Zoom links for office hours as well. Okay. Uh, question in the chat. Uh, question, uh, will I be letting people in the waiting list to Canvas? Yes. So uh, so uh, shoot me an email um, if you're on the waiting list and I can let you onto the Canvas site. Okay. Um, so this part is still a little bit underdeveloped just because, you know, I, I, I didn't think we'd be meeting today. Um, but, you know, uh, this part will become a bit more um, filled out as we as we go on. Um, all right. Um, so this is the homepage of the course website. So actually, you know, the main thing that you'll probably see most of the time is going to be this weekly, this course outline here. Okay. Because what, what, what you're going to see is that as the course goes along, these links here will become clickable, right? And I'll show you what one of these, uh, what one of these pages actually looks like. So, uh, we'll cover that in, in, in a minute. Um, any questions on, on this so far? All right, so next tab is the announcements tab. And so these all get emailed to you, but if you wanna have a, uh, wanna see the, the record of all the announcements, it's here, okay? Here is the assignments tab. And so these are all the assignments that are, um, that are assigned. Right now it's only the introductions one. Okay. Next we have the grades tab. And so this is all the graded assignments. And so you can see a summary of your total grade here. Here is a summary of, uh, of all the different uh, breakdowns for all the different categories here. Next is the people's tab. I don't know how useful this is because it doesn't have email addresses, but you know, if you're curious about you know, the names of the people in the class, you can look at it here. Uh, next, we have the files tab. And so this is where you're gonna find all of the lecture notes, all the homework assignments, all the code. Um, this is basically kind of the Dropbox folder for the class. Okay? Uh, all the lecture notes are there already. So if, you, if you're curious and you wanna view all the lecture notes, it's, uh, it's here. Okay? But we'll be going through this uh, throughout the course. And then once I put in the assignments, the code, things like that, all of that will, will show up uh, here as well. Okay, um, so that's kind of a quick tour of, of the website. But the main thing that I wanna show you guys oops, is the, the weekly views. And so right now it's not up just because I haven't, I haven't had a chance to, uh, to prepare it. Um, but what you're gonna see eventually is that, you know, let's say, let's look at week one, right? Um, what you're going to see eventually is a page like this. And so on each of the weekly pages, you're going to see a little bit of a blurb in terms of what, uh, what, the, what the week is about. You're going to see the, uh, the learning objectives for the week. Okay. Um, so those are there. This is probably the most important part. And so if you want to go back and watch the recordings from the lecture, you can do so here. Okay. And I do it this way so that if you miss a certain lecture or if you want to see a particular lecture, you know, let's say that you, you you missed the lecture on Thursday, right? So that's week one, lecture two. And so what you would do is you would click on week one here, right? And then it would take you to this page. And then you can view the uh, the lecture for week one, lecture two, okay? Right now it's clickable because this these are the links from when I taught this last. This was back in spring uh, 2022, okay? I'm going to add timestamps, what the heck? I did not do that. Anyway, okay. Um, so you can view the lectures here. So these will be updated based on this based on this year's lecture. Okay, uh, here are all the assignments, and then all the files that you need for this week are going to be here as well. So the lecture slides from today will be up, um, and then on Thursday we're going to be going over cardiovascular anatomy. So that's going to be up um, here as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I try to keep the the course website pretty straightforward. I, I try to kind of organize it week by week. Uh, but there are shortcuts in terms of the files and the assignments to kind of, uh, you know, uh, take you where you need to go if you're looking for something specific. All right, any final questions uh, before we wrap it up for today? Okay, 
All right, so we ended a bit early today, uh, so I'll stick around. I mean, I'm, I'm teaching another class here at 5.30, so I'm, I'm going to be twiddling my thumbs here for the next 40 minutes. Uh, and so if you want to come up and talk, um, if you have a question about the waitlist or anything, I'll be here. Uh, but if not, uh, thank you guys for coming today. I, I know it was really short notice. Um, I literally got the same text as you guys at 10 p.m. last night, so i uh, really happy you guys could all make it out. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you on Thursday. Thank you. I was by next week. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit hectic right now because uh, right, right and everything. But I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to the department chair. And I'll probably turn talk about it. Uh, I think if he wants to wait a little bit. He wants to see how people kind of move around. I think people are kind of testing out different. I think next week is probably the one. I think right now there's only 30 people officially enrolled. I know this, I know this room can hold, I think, 37 people. So if you're first on the wing, I think there's a really good chance. Uh, it's a grad class, so it's 541. Oh, so it's like okay. the graduate version of uh, FBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's a lot, it's a lot more theory. Yeah. Like, what was like the like the beginning of exactly you would see? Because I'm like actually engaged right now. I don't know. So, I mean, I think this room can hold. I think, I think the more difficult thing is that uh, we added a lot of technical lessons at the 11th hour. And so, I think they're trying to balance the enrollment. So, I think if, if certain technical lessons don't have like a, a minimum amount of students then they're going to cancel the class okay, and so sure. they may they may want to kind of shuffle people down so for the first few people i think the chance is really good uh i've, I've always lobbied for like trying to just add everyone from the wait list uh but actually last semester with feba it was, it was kind of an issue because it was um yeah because i because i took so many people for feba a couple other electives were kind of in danger and so I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit in trouble in terms of that, but I'll, I'll, I'll push for it again. But uh, I think, um, you know, I think it's gonna, it's gonna depend on it. This year they're not doing the permit to like for the waitlist. Wait a second. They're not doing the permit for you to get into the class. I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna do it because, because, mm -hmm. because usually, because what they've done in the past to let people on the waitlist is that they've just increased the capacity of the course. Yeah. But uh, last semester they did the permit, thing, which, was, which was kind of very strange. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I maybe that's what they wanted to do moving forward. So. Um, so I don't know. So I think, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll push for it, but I won't, I won't know until next. So I think as of right now, I think at least like the ones that I've checked, like every tech elective is all like way to set up. Yeah. Like, for yeah. Aging. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good indication. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk, I'll talk with, uh, I'll talk with him tomorrow and then probably sometime next week. And then we'll have to okay. For sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I just want you to see the campus. We have to email you and then so you know. Yeah, yeah, just, just, let me, just let me know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Is it the home of one we're going to get accepted to the platform for the home? Um, yes. Well, I mean, you should, so you should get access to the canvas uh, just so that you can use it. Yeah. Well, like right now, yeah. 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 So, so, should, so send me an email. Okay. Yeah. You can't get the question. What's your current one? That's Yeah. It's a the the email that you sent me um looks like it didn't work. Uh just just send me an email to my uh to my Cal State Fullerton one. Uh, oh, I think yeah. I'll I think I'll add everyone kind of in, in bulk. Yeah. Okay. You, do you know what position on the wait list you are? I think I'm on the seventh wait list. Seventh. Or hang on, I think the, I think I think the speakers aren't working. Can you type it out in the chat? Sorry, I can see you're talking, but I can't I can't hear anything. Okay, yeah. So I, I was I was telling someone just now. So I I don't know how many people I can add from the waitlist for this class. Um, I'll, I'm gonna try my best to try to add everyone. But if you're if for those people that are kind of lower on the waitlist. 
Um, I'll see. I'll try. I'll push for it. But I think they they might they might say no to me. Yeah. Yeah. Send me an email. Yep. Mm -hmm. 